this is more fun. All right, I think we're ready to get a start. Thanks for uh, talk to me, coming. Thanks for yeah. hanging out and, and listening to the music tonight. And we're playing the pieces of music that I found hard to categorize, so we're trying to call them uh, jazz standards. But, uh, but I'm thinking, what, what? There's a lot of jazz standards. And I would say something about that because I was thinking about it, and, and it'll, it'll make it uh, make me think harder about it. What do I really think? I was thinking I I lived for a while next to the uh, Barnes Foundation in uh, Marion, Pennsylvania, which is a collection of art. And uh, this guy Albert Barnes had a had a, a philosophy of teaching art, and he thought uh, that it should make sense. That it wasn't like just about taste, uh, like the philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein said that art was just taste, like if somebody likes Mexican food, another person likes Chinese food, and there was not much to be said about it. And if you said much about it, you weren't making any sense. <laughs> so that, I think there's, maybe that's ultimately true. But uh, what do you, I don't know. The, but it's, um, this is a question that's not settled. Uh, but uh, Barnes had the idea about painting, that he said it was, uh, there were things you could look at and the things that would make sense. And he said in painting, it was about line and color and light. And that's what it was about. And there was uh, the expression of broad human values were important. But in, in music, it's a uh, uh, rhythm and harmony and melody uh, were really where it was at. And then there was people could sh display their virtuosity or their not caring for virtuosity or, or their human values. So I, th I thought these tunes that we're going to play, uh, they're be they've become jazz uh, pieces because they offer that chance for the improviser and composer or and player to um, to explore rhythm, harmony, and melody more than a lot of other songs, like a like say a pop song, might uh, might have a little uh, a lyric that you would really like or something. Or and Albert Barnes called that stuff transferred values, where you, if you really uh, where you say he had the, he always used the example of. Uh, the American Gothic got Grant Wood and these guys with pitchforks, and and you could look at that painting and you say, uh, you say, oh, I love my country and I love my grandfather, and but it wasn't about what was on the canvas. It was more about uh, transferred values. It wasn't what your your eyes were not involved. It was like a concept that you were thinking of. So, so I think in um, I wanted to say that, and I think in uh, in so these these pieces that we're going to play. For me, they're attracted. That's one. I, th I was like, why do I want to play these pieces? And these guys both said, oh, those are great pieces. And so they, uh, we agreed. <laughs> and uh, maybe it's all, that's all you have to do. Maybe it's taste. <laughs> so thank you for uh, uh, listening to all that. So we're now we're going to play a piece by Horace Silver. And this piece is called Peace, P E A C E. All right, ready? Two.
Thank you. Uh, I was one of, uh, had the thought playing that. Uh, I've always wanted to do it, but we didn't do it, we didn't do it tonight. Of playing that song for uh, 24 hours in a row. It's, it's a, uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a interesting um, structure, and uh, it would be as a way of a peace demonstration. You know, the song called Peace to play. Well, isn't that a nice idea? It's it just takes some st stamina. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, maybe we'll do that before too long. We're going to play uh, the next tune is uh, another classic by uh, Mongo Santa Maria and, and uh, Oscar Brown Jr. wrote words to it and performed it years ago. And Afro Blue, and it has uh, it's another easy examples of what you can what can be done with a simple little song. And, and we're going to do our best to do something. <laughs> and a part of all, part of the fun of this, doing these songs for us t today is that. Uh, we don't really know what we're going to do, and, and I was saying we could. It's okay if we take uh, short solos, or it's really okay if we take really long ones, or if somebody wants to play. Uh, we don't really know, so that's uh, that adds to the thrill. <laughs> Sometimes that's more fun. Like, uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs>
Yeah, it was fun. Nice solo. Nice. This, uh, you know, we're going to play another uh, sta uh, standard by this one by uh, trumpet player Kenny Dorham, uh, who uh, wrote a lot of songs and did a lot of arranging. But this one uh, isn't characteristic of him, uh, Blue Bossa. And it, it, uh, it's, it's one of these ones where it's, the form is easy to uh, remember, so it's often used as beginner's play it. But it's a wonderful song uh, for advanced players as well. So we're going to do our best uh, with Blue Bossa. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks. Blue box. Hey. All right. No, thanks. That's, now we're going to do another uh, challenging tune that uh, jazz musicians always used to play called uh, C. Often it's a, yeah, it's 1930. This tune was written in, so it's 100 years old. Cherokee. And it, uh, it's a tune that Charlie Parker loved to play. And it, it, uh, I think partly his approach to the tune attracted a lot of attention. And, but it's a it's a tune that has a lot of space in it, and it's uh, so it it offers a different kind of a challenge for a player to fill the spaces, and we're going to do our best to play Cherokee. Go.
All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. We did our best. That was nice. That was fun. Uh, Roland, now we got a, a one we arrangement. Just we just made this up today. Uh, Bill Evans played the song uh, Emily uh, a lot. It's a uh, waltz, and it's from the movie called The Americanization of Emily, that uh, is, which is a good movie. Do you know it? Yeah, it's it's a it's a um, it's kind of an anti-war movie from I think it's Alan Alda or somebody who's in it. And it's 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 if you it, it's I I only saw the movie because I liked the song and I knew the movie was from the song. <laughs> the song was from the movie. The movie was from the song, really. But uh, we're gonna play it and then mix it in with. Uh, uh, Bill Evans also played this piece called Peace Peace, and we're trying to mix the melody two. To
Nice. Yeah. We're moving on. We're going to do another standard. It's, uh, it might have been from the same Bill Evans record. As he liked this tune to uh, Like Someone in Love, a song by uh, Jimmy Van Heusen. Uh, uh, wrote a lot of songs. I don't know how he, how he did it. He came up with a, a lot of great songs. And uh, good lyric. Like Someone in Love. Ready? All right.
Here we go. <laughs> All right. We got. We got one more. This two more. This set. Uh, I'm gonna play a song. Um, I don't know what this is from the 1960s, and uh, it's uh, written by a saxophonist called Eddie Harris, and it's uh, and it uh, was I guess a movement at that time of mixing uh, funk and pop and jazz and far out jazz, and it uh, and I think it was a hit, Freedom Jazz Dance, and sometimes it was called Freedom Dance, and it's uh, everybody who plays it plays it differently, and we will too.
<laughs> yeah, all right, thank you. <laughs> That's a challenge. Okay. Challenge to use this. One more of this set. We're going to play, a, a, go out with a, a slower, a more uh, plaintive song called uh, Wayward Plaint. And it's a song uh, it's written by this guy that I studied with years ago in Philadelphia, Dennis Sandoli. He didn't write that many songs, but this this is, a, uh, I think, an exceptionally nice song. And, it, 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 uh, and it's a nice title, Wayward Plaint, P-L-A-I-N-T. Uh,
Thanks for hanging in, everybody, for a long first set. Well, thank you, everybody, for hanging in. We're going to play another bunch of music starting now. But keep uh, going. We're going to play the first pieces by uh, Charles Mingus uh, called Nostalgia in Times Square. And it's, uh, it's full of nostalgia. And it has, it's full of Times Square, too. And it's... Uh, uh, I think it, you know, and the song has stuff from somebody Mingus type uh, view. Looking back, you can, you'll hear like 20s and 30s music and 40s music, all in, put together in a simple way. Nostalgia in Times Square. Dun, 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 two, one.
Right, yeah, great composer. Now we're going to play another uh, a ballad. Uh, oh, I don't know who wrote it. My Foolish Heart. I wonder who prize is offered, if everybody knows who wrote that. My Foolish Heart. Bill Evans played it a lot, so I, I, I learned it from, from his playing. Uh, My Foolish Heart. I always liked the lyric. Uh, All right, the night is like a lovely song. Uh, I don't, do you know? Do you know the lyrics? Sorry. I don't have the. I don't have. Um. Yeah. Washington. Yeah. How bright the. The ever. Something moon. Washington Young. Yeah. The night is like a lovely. Song. Oh boy, we'll have to figure that out later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. To Thank you. 
Some of the people here know the, called Mother of Earl. I think we've played that sometimes before. And it's, a, it's, it's a, uh, for the, the composer's name is Earl, Earl Zenders. And the story was that uh, they was, amazingly enough, uh, Bill Evans and Earl Zenders were both in the Army. And they were sitting around a, a table uh, passing time. And they had a contest uh, who could write the best song in an hour with no uh, musical materials at hand except paper and pencil. And the uh, and Earl Sanders won the contest hands down with his song, and Bill Evans kept telling everybody, "Have you heard this composition? This this is a mother of Earl, the Earl Sanders wrote this composition. It's just really a mother, and that's that's so that's how it got its title, <laughs> Mother of Earl." Which I didn't know. I thought it was something like Mother of Pearl or something. But so you got it. One, two. Let's see, that's not right. Pete's got an important business call. Hello? It's Earl's mother. Saying I still own the copyrights. Well, maybe it's a producer calling. Yeah, right. Two, one.
Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thanks. And I, I didn't even, uh, everybody knows everybody, but I didn't introduce formally uh, any of the players. Or thank Woodstock Community TV and uh, Jared for coming and doing this. Uh, we're really, uh, it's a big help and uh, uh, help, helps us uh, get scope on what we're doing and uh, other people around the world can see it. And it's Tim Gilmore playing drums and Peter Concilio playing the bass. I'm really happy to uh, have these guys uh, as they introduce the band. Uh, yeah, I know you've met before. <laughs> we got a, f a few more to do. We're going to do um, a song by uh, Jimmy Heath, a Philadelphia saxophonist. Uh, called Gemini.
for that song too, a beautiful composition by Jimmy Heath. And uh, we're going to play uh, back-to-back compositions of Jimmy Heath. Uh, this one's called um, A Sound for Sore Ears. A Sound for Sore Ears. This is, this, uh, this is another title deserving of applause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Sound for Sore Ears. I think that phrase is going to make it into the vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. That's the sound for sore eyes. It's like a sight for sore eyes. Okay. Dun, dun. One, two,
that song should be more, more famous. Uh, the sound for Soria. So it's uh, uh, a couple more to play. We have uh, going to do. Um, hey, yeah, why not? We're going to play one by Charlie Parker called "Back Home Blues." And uh, Charlie Parker, Parker, I think I didn't never count them, but I bet there are 30 original blues that that he composed that are uh, all. They're like um, comparable to uh, Chopin etudes or, or somebody like that, where they're, they're be uh, would repay effort to learn them and advance your level of playing by doing them. <laughs> That's it. Now I'll try to play it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think they were written very casually, though. I don't think he had that in, kind of in compositional intent. You know. But who knows? Oh, ready? Okay. One, two, one, two, three. Four.
All right. Thanks. Now we're going to play one by Roland Kirk uh, called Serenade to a Cuckoo. Uh -huh. Ready for Serenade. <coughs> Anybody here seen Roland Kirk in person? All right. You didn't see me. That's <laughs> 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 not. Great. Uh, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
All right. Gonna close our set with another song by Roland Kirk called uh, Ladies Blues that is uh, dedicated to Billy Holiday. It sounds like Ladies Blues could be for any lady, but it's, it's like it was meant for. That's a beautiful yeah, right. Yeah. Here we go. Ladies Blues. One, two.
Brothers to our Wassail uh, tribute. Uh, well, thanks. That's our, our set for the evening. Thanks, everybody, for hanging in and playing and uh, listening to us. And, uh, we're appreciative of you and uh, I love the opportunity of playing. Mm -hmm.